<laughs> Hello. <laughs> now I'm going to start again. Hello. Welcome to Star Wars Bells Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman. And today, uh, before we go any further, And then it starts talking specifically about footballers in 1994 that retired. So, okay, so we can't use any more of the audio from the That's the Season That Was 1994, hosted by Mike Sheehan. Um, but yes, Star Wars 2023, that's the year that was. That was the season that was. Right on time, arriving precisely when it should. Uh, and before we go any further, let's just bring on our two co-hosts here joining me at, at, on the panel, Catherine Neen. Matt Mull, hi guys. G'day. Hello. So in AFL terms, what what's my nickname then? We've got to have a nickname then. Uh, you would be Jigger Neen. Mustard. Mustard. <laughs> no, no, we mustard. Oh, yeah, mustard. Catherine, too. Catherine Neen. Neen is mustard. Cat that mustard. Yeah. Yep. Mull, you'd be probably like Molly Molly, Austin Mull, something Austin Powersy, Mull. The no, Mull. I, I would be Mole Pest. Mole, mole yeah, patrol. All right. Mole patrol. Um, what's a famous mole? Adrian. Adrian. Adrian mole. Yeah. Mo- oh, oh Kylie. No, Kylie mole. That's what you be, Kylie. Kylie mole. Mate, I'm I'm quite happy being the famous Matt mole. So in, <laughs> infamous <laughs> Matt mole. <laughs> Just doing that out of one itself. Um, Matt, you haven't been with us uh, since you know last year, but obviously Catherine, you were on a week or two ago. The woman that all that. Crazy Mandalorian news dropped, um, but we're doing our year review. We're a little bit behind, but we wanted to bring the, the team from last year back on so we can go through 2023. What a year of Star Wars it was, apparently, depending who you ask. Well, just one sec. The, the fourth member of our crew, he, he's moved on to greener pastures, hasn't he? He's... Uh, Andy, yeah. Well, I, I, I thought about tapping him for this but i know i had you guys this last year but i have got plans for andy he's i think he's he maybe he's just going well you haven't invited me on anything so i'm just going off i'm going to do my own thing he's popping up on scruffy he's popping up his own podcasts the the first man to go on scruffy's back to back to back in history a three-peater like the hawks that's oh god (laughs) We're going to really alienate all those people who've been t- tweeting about the NFL nonstop for the last few weeks. Now they're just going to be uh, wondering what all the references are here. But yeah, so we're talking about what went what down down in Star Wars in 2023. I don't even have a a timeline here, so I'm going to have to just go off memory and try to remember what was the first thing. Well, I see. Was, did Bad Batch come season two come first, or did Mando season three come first? Bad Batch. Remember. Bad Batch came out in February, like it's going to come this year, and we had that awesome, I don't know, sixteen weeks and of of Bad Batch, and then I think Mando started about four to five weeks later. Um, hey Matt, yeah, want to do me a favor, mate? Uh, <laughs> no, don't. No, what are we at three minutes. Three minutes. Oh. We, you've got a reminder to put your mic in front of your face. It is in front of me. Was I just not? <laughs> uh, do you know where your face? Because I'm looking at you on a camera. Do you know where your? Can you can you see yourself on the camera? I'm trying not to look. Um, All right. Well, obviously, your microphone is like basically. If your head was like one more head the size over, your head, your face would be in front of the microphone. That's it. That's uh, it. Molly Garbutt. There we go. Beautifully. Yeah, we can pass that through. Okay. So, Bad Batch season two was was a bit. Um, it kind it was, of. It was very good. good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't think Bad Batch season one was that bad. I know, Catherine, you're not the world's biggest Omega fan, but I think even you came out of season two going, this is some good Star Wars we got going on here. Yeah, I really liked the storyline, where it was going. Um, there were one or two, it was a bit meh, but um, overall I really liked the story, the, looking into what happened to the clones afterwards with um, – Cody in particular. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was you know quite up on season two. So season three, Tex Return, um, 
will be <laughs> return fantastic. of tech. Return of the tech. You reckon he's? You reckon he's? Well, we got. I mean, that's the thing. It's the the, the trailer finally sort of dropped. Did we see the? Did we see a trailer at Celebration? I don't even remember. Well, there was I didn't. one. I didn't. No, if they showed one, it wasn't in anything that we were in. Yeah, we didn't get into much. Well, I don't. I think. I don't think Bad Batch. We'll get to Celebration later. I think, but yeah, I'm just trying to remember whether we. It must have been the year before. We definitely at Anaheim we did. We saw oh, because they showed an yeah. episode, didn't they? Yeah. At, at Anaheim we got an episode, the first episode, and um, extended trailer with all the crabs. Remember? Ah, oh, um, yeah, that's it. that's where I'm getting my wires crossed. I'm getting my celebrations crossed over here. That's right. Um, I left the Scruffy's household where a marriage began. It was it's initiated on that particular night. And uh, I left 15 minutes early so that I could get to the Bad Batch panel, and they were just like, we don't care. They were, they were watching the Forest. Um, oh, it was the Forest playoff match, was it? Forest playoff match, yeah. Yeah. Big day. A <laughs> lot, 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 lot of love blossomed in Anaheim. Yeah, yeah, certainly did. Now, uh, so, yeah, we've got basically Bad Batch came out and, and kind of, you know, sort of showed how it was done, really. Cohesive, well thought out plot, real stakes, uh, really sort of stuck the landing of the series, left on a, a bit of a cliffhanger. I mean, it was, you know, obviously it's still a show that's aimed at a slightly younger audience. So a lot of the things you're telegraphing, you knew that what's her face, Sid was going to, Sid was going to sell out the the bad batch and all those kind of things. But uh, yeah, it certainly, certainly was very good. And it's, it's kind of weird to think about when it sort of started, there wasn't a ton of enthusiasm for the bad batch, I don't think in general coming off the back of Clone Laws, like, oh, well, we'll see how this goes. And now it's sort of very revered. Yeah, it's 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 sort of like, um, you know, high, it's really high, high quality. I mean, the animation is such high quality. I think the storyline as well, I mean, you know, some of the locations like Mantantis and the, and the evolution of the Stormtroopers, it's, it's really getting into the meat of the Empire's beginning. And, you know, in, in that recent trailer, this new... New words from Palpatine. It's with Ian McDermott. You know, it's it's it's. I I've, I'm so pumped. I'm a 41 year old man. I showed my personal trainer the the trailer. I said, "Oh, I'm so excited for this." And he, he just looked at me, going, "He's like, dude, drop it and give me 20, nerd." <laughs> it's a cartoon, dude. But anyway, he's got two clients. There's Matt Matt St. Leonard's and Matt Star Wars. So, no guess which one might which Matt I am. Um, <laughs> I just like the idea that you're just trying to win over your personal trainer by showing him Star Wars clips on your phone. <laughs> well, no, no, he his wife is a big Star Wars fan. Like she watched Andor, watched um, Ahsoka, and um, she makes him watch. And and so he comes to me for sort of um, bridging commentary to sort of oh, uh, how do I connect with my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how it's done. Exactly. So Sirio Debarjanak over there. Oh yeah. Very smooth. What a great pull, Catherine. So, yeah, I think it's the, the year started off really strong. I think it's kind of almost a shame that Bad Batch is going to end now that it's it's really got that momentum behind it. But I suppose you kind of, you know, hopefully if they stick the landing, goes out on a high, it'll be a very revered Star Wars, you know, thing that we got. Didn't really get a chance to drop off, kind of got better and better and, and uh, you know, walked out with its head held high. But we might be here, at the, you know, we'll be here in a year's time talking about, you know, 2024 and maybe we're like, wow, they really screwed the pooch on Bad Batch Season 3. Who knew? Well. Uh, I think, you know, they should get there. Like, I, they seem to have an arcy mind. I, that's just the feeling. It doesn't feel like they're making it up as they go along. No, there's a very like deliberate, a, yeah. Story. And I don't know whether it's because it's animation and you got to, do a lot plan more a lot more ahead or it's easier to slightly change things because you can kind of pre-vis everything and and do all of that but it does feel like there's a lot of thought and care and planning going into this maybe we can't reset for some other stuff but we'll get onto that in a minute well, but, uh, reshoots in animation aren't as difficult as uh, as uh, in real life no. you sort of just just draw again um, we well, just got to call d bradley breaker up again and say all right mate get in the booth we need a couple more couple can, more can, lines can we just go back to the we were all in, in the celebration room where Dee Bradley Baker and Michelle Ang did a scene and he 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 played seven characters. You weren't there, Catherine? No. It was insane. I always we always wondered on my podcast when when we actually talked about it, if um he does the line separately or he just goes 
you know, just inter- interchanging between characters. And at, at Celebration, he did that. And it was just mental watching it in action. He just changed like a, like a schizophrenic person, like just into seven different characters within 10 minutes. He still doesn't say he still doesn't sound New Zealand like a New Zealander though, does he? Really? No, no he doesn't. <laughs> you know, he's he's doing a good approximation, I suppose, but yeah, he he doesn't sound particularly New Zealand. It's not quite Steve Gutenberg levels of bad New Zealand accent. There's a pull for you. I think Catherine probably gets that reference. I get that reference. Let's get this. <laughs> Yep. No, I'm, I'm over it, two then. <laughs> you're over, yeah, you're still trying to figure out what the other one was you were talking about a minute ago, Catherine. I'm going to have to Google that later. Serio de Barjana, that's, that's, that's on my to-do list. <laughs> or have you, you can do Rox, Roxanne. Roxanne. Yeah, I say Roxanne. The Steve Martin? No? That's a little no. bit more closer to home? No? Okay. That's all right. We can, um, we can school you later on <laughs> on that one. So yeah, full marks, full marks. Oh, should we do? Are we going to do a rating? Are we going to do a rating thing? What do we do? We do a, a, a rating if, we're, if this was marking a paper, Catherine. Oh, don't make me mark. That's not fair. Uh, I'm not a maths teacher. There's, you can tell right and wrong. A minus. A minus. A minus. I'm going to give it an A. I'm going to give it a solid A. This was the Catherine, only you're thing gonna, you're going to abstain, Catherine. Yeah. Catherine's abstaining. Abstaining, staying, staying neutral. But this is the only thing that Emily Lind and Brittany Brown liked in the whole year. So if we had them on the show, they this is the only thing they'd be positive about. The rest would be just be a, a negative fest. It's funny if you got into the, the start of the year and said that they probably thought would have thought you were crazy. Oh, I agree. I agree. But can well, we just we talk are. talk about the bald faced elephant in the room after that last trailer? Because it seems to have the Star Wars world buzzing. Oh, about. Asajj Ventress. Now, I didn't. I hadn't read the book. I wasn't down with the Asajj Ventress where she was at, kind of thing. I didn't even realize that they'd killed her off. <laughs> so, she she sacrificed herself for her love for Quinlan Voss. Oh, really? I didn't even know that they were a couple. There you go. Yeah. They, Every time uh, I think of Quinlan Voss, I just think of Sal Perales. I just think they're the same person. <laughs> I'm like, does his wife know about this? Um, the right. So. Did she was she alive at the end of the Clone Wars? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and and the, the series. Mm-hmm. Did she turn so, up in the last episodes? Oh, uh, well, she sort of went on her own as like a rogue bounty hunter, and then yeah, you, you never really see much from there because like th- these arcs were expected for season seven and whatever, but it never happened. But they've the writers of the Bad Batch have come out and said we are not retconning. Dark Disciple, they, 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 from the beginning, they were on top of this ahead of the curve. So they're there. I don't know. I'm excited. It's just crazy to think that they wouldn't be. I, I, I feel like that that's like if some people were going, oh my God, I can't believe they stuffed up so badly. We're like, like, come on, give, give us a break. Like, we, we do have people who check these sort of things. Well, no, no but, but sometimes they go, well, that book doesn't care. That's, you know, sometimes it doesn't Your matter. It's quite new, though, isn't it? I think so, yeah. So in the timeline of the book, when does she die? Does she die before the end of the Clone Wars? Like does she, like if Revenge of the Sith is like the end of the Clone Wars, is she dead in the book? Well, I haven't, I haven't read the book. I think it's after that. So like because Quinlan's working with the path and stuff as well. So there's t- they've got they've got the opportunity to sort of um fit her in, but just yeah, there's room. So there's room to wiggle. Okay, okay. okay. I'll, I'll see what I see. I, I didn't realize that she was shaving her head naturally. I just thought she was naturally bald. So same. Yeah, you know, she's just gone to advanced hair and got a got a hair hat kind of thing. You know, it's got to be a yeah, yeah done, Catherine. What do you reckon? I don't know. It's hard to hard to know because yeah, you know, I'm trying to think about the Dothamir witches, mm-hmm. whether they had hair or bald or a mixture. I can't. The Dothamir witches, they sort of had headrests, so you couldn't tell sometimes. But um, yeah. but also she can die and they can revive her. They've done that before. Yeah. Oh, look, she wouldn't be the first Star Wars character to come back from the dead in inverted commas. So, you know, why not? We'll see. It's more that if you bring him back just to kill him again, that's the like. <laughs> if you're going to commit to a coming back from the dead, like commit for a coming back from the dead. Let's just 
let's be real here. All right. So Bad Batch, well done, Bad Batch. You you do well. Well done doing you. So I've, I found an article on StarWars.com, which was the best of 2023. So I'm just going to work my way down to the next thing that was in here. So I've just got a thing. So Bad Batch was the first thing anyway. So that worked. Mandalorian Season 3. Ugh. Here it is. With the big we've... crocodile start. Yeah. The, the, we've, we've kind of obviously, we've reviewed, we've talked, we reviewed every episode after it was out. We did a preview. We've done a recap. I mean, what is there else to say about this? But, it, you know, it, there were signs on the first episode. And, uh, I mean, there were signs sort of before that when we sort of wondered about where the hell it was going to go and what how could they pull it off. Um, yeah, that they had done the major emotional, that they'd solved the major emotional cliffhanger, the major arc that we thought season three would be about in two episodes of Book of Boba Fett. Yes. Oh, and that also, yeah, that also ended the show perfectly at the end of season two as well. Uh, so that was always a bit of a problem. It definitely fell, you know, didn't quite live up to expectations you know, not for everybody some people still loved it but i think hopefully it's a bump in the road because there's going to be more there's definitely there's a movie coming now and there's uh so is there word that season four is going to happen before the movie now is that matt you're mm-hmm. the one who reads all this insider stuff what's going on there is conjecture that the movie and season four are two separate items john favreau may have written everything prior to the strike I saw something recently. I, I sent it to Turbo, and Turbo goes, "Unless I hear it from StarWars.com, I don't believe it." And then, and then two days later, sends me some Bespin Bulletin garbage. Um, <laughs> so, but the most recent thing I saw was that Mando season four is six episodes, and the movie is the finale, which could see. Be cool. I don't like that. That's no, annoying. because for the it's late- not an event, then it's just like going to the movies to watch the last few episodes of TV. Like it's got to be a movie, movie. Make it a movie with like like with a standalone thing. Like we talked about, Catherine, when you were on. It's like the Muppet movie. It's a standalone story. It sits like it can sit within the world, great, but it can't just be like what's going to have a recap at the start, or it'll just be like when we would go to the the Disney put on the the finale episodes. It'll just feel like that. Like just show the episode in the cinema. Yeah, I ain't buying that. Well, I agree. I you know it's it's a little bit on the. On the Especially note. if I've already paid for my Disney Plus subscription and then I've got to fork out 20 bucks to go watch the finale at, at, in a cinema. At midnight, though. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like, I've got to admit, when we saw episodes of Mandalorian, like the one that they showed at Celebration, that was pretty cool watching it with everyone in whatever room we were in. Like, mm-hmm. it, it was a very cool vibe with all the, the fans seeing it. And it is a great vibe. It's just the lows of Mandalorian Season 3 were quite low. Yes. Can we... Is what it, was the we... best thing in Mandalorian Season 3? The episode, the second last episode, I think, maybe, when they got to Mandalore and it was sort of... Maybe... Catherine will be like Carathon will be like the Andor episode was the best one. <laughs> when I put when I turned it off and put Andor on. <laughs> like I I liked all that stuff that was on Coruscant with Dr. Pershing. But I think uh, I yeah. said at the time, and I stand by this, that would have been way better served if we'd just gotten bits of it spread through a few episodes then leaning into it. So it was rather than just one chunk of an episode, drip, you know, have it more over spread over more of the season, like us checking back in with Dr. Pershing. Because mm-hmm. the actual content of that I found interesting. Um, but... I'm just trying... I'm think- sorry, I've just, I've just pulled up like the episode list. I'm just looking at the episodes going, oh, yeah... Well, the, I, the low point was definitely Lizzo and Jack Black episode. But I they... don't think it was. Like, I think that was an outlying weird episode that didn't really go anywhere that had no effect. Like, fine. Like, okay, these things happen. But it wasn't representative of the rest of the season. Like, Because it wasn't really that. 
anything to do with the actual plot. But I think well, just the overall plot of the season was uninspiring. And it was just a weak season. Uninteresting. Like- well, the Lizzo one people... was weird, but it wasn't. It wasn't like it was the reason the season was bad. But no, I mean I... the f- the season was still exciting. And like I mean, seeing the mythosaur that sort of created buzz and mystery, and you know, I enjoyed those little scenes on Mandalore and stuff. But I don't know. It just it just but it lost was those focus. ideas of things. But it was just the oh, I got to go there to to undo the thing that you took your helmet off, and that meant a lot before. And now you're undoing that, and oh, you've got. Grogu away, now you're un- undoing that. And oh, Moff Gideon is out of the picture. No, nah, he's been undone. He's coming back now too. So it was all this just like finding a reason to go back to the things that happened before at the start. Like you could have ended, yeah, I don't know. Like you could have had those two Book of Boba Fett episodes and then had the last episode and where they end up and they're just like on the farm together and skipped all that and been like, yeah, they went back to Mandalore and they, I don't know. Yeah. And and the the whole time on Mandalore, it was fine. They could have just gone back and but yeah, everyone's, just, well, everyone's living in, oh, we can't go back there. It's completely decimated. And, oh, actually, it's fine. And there's a base there and there's there's life there and, and there's people there. And uh, I feel like they just sort of need, this is the season they needed to get out of the way so that they could move on to the next bit. Yeah. We never knew the stakes. I think that's something that I think, is it Steele who has brought up that we never knew what Moff Gideon's plan was until the last ten minutes or something? And yeah, why was it so important to go back to Mandalore? Was it strategically important? Were they actually going to join the fight? Were they going to? Was it just because they wanted their planet back? Like, it, you know, is it barricade? Is it is it a barricade? Is there if there is life on Mandalore? Is there is everyone rushing to Mandalore now because it's so important? Like, it's just sort of yeah. I, I got a feeling, I don't know, I've got a feeling that they're going to go harder. I don't think they're going to back off. I don't know. I mean, I know, I like that it ended with Grogu and Mando back together again, original recipe. Let's just go with that. And I'm going, well, if they're going to go to a movie, it's sort of a perfect jumping off movie because it doesn't have all the baggage. You can just have the two characters. Yeah. But if you get if you give me like three quarters of a season of that again, and then it's like, hey, do you want to go to the movies <laughs> to go watch the last two? And I'm like, oh, I suppose. Yeah, like, I mean, I'd rather just be a standalone event and then go, all right, and then after that we'll pick up the story in the, in the story thing afterwards. And sort of how do you sort of get a Mando season four and then get it high stakes enough that it'll, you want to get off the couch and go to the cinema? Like, And then what about all the people who haven't seen the four seasons that, you know they're they're kind of they're kind of banking on. I'm I'm worried if 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 it doesn't work out and, and it hits you know 200 million because everyone's like Ugh, I'll just wait for it to come on Disney Plus. Yeah, when we discussed this, Catherine a few, a few weeks ago announced of just like what do you if it's a standalone movie, what what where's the plot? Does it move the whole story over? Is it a standalone thing? Like what does it mean? So I don't know. There's there's smart people there. They're all experienced. You know, Johnny Fab's made some hits. So. If he's got a plan, he's got a plan. They're going to get the budget. There's no reason why it can't be spectacular, but they've got to, I've got to be, I'll be there, but I want to be sold to be excited. I want my hype levels, you know, yes. raring to go rather than just going because I'm going, well, I'm going to see a few sort of longer episodes. Because, you know, I'm thinking now Mandalorian season three, it quote unquote failed on execution I think execution of how of its ideas and story is where it, I got frustrated. I think like it just—it was a bit like when are they getting to the fireworks factory or whatever it is with Millhouse? You know, when are they getting to the fire? <laughs> it just—it was just yeah. It was just a lot of sort of dancing around and not focusing on the core of the thing that made the show great. Yeah. But we'll see. I don't know. I I I, I give it a C. There's still some great stuff, but I give you know we had two A seasons before that, so I'm, I'm giving it a C. It's not a total fail, but it's um, it's hurt 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 my love for the for the for it. What about you, Matt? I mm-hmm. thought it was a, a B minus. Like I, I went in with you know, you know it was two year wait. You yeah you, know, you could I, I I never thought you could you know get the spectacular highs of season two ending. I, that was, that's like, you know, trying to top the Beatles and like, um, but still it was, 
Hey, mate, it's called Wings. Look it up. Band on the run. Like, come on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm making a Beatles joke. <laughs> I'm, I'm a 0 for 3. Um, I'm having another river. <laughs> God, I have so much homework after this. Um, so, yeah, I was I was pretty disappointed. But I, I enjoyed it. But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have the the, the fair, as Frosty would say, the fairy dust, the tingles, the the. Yeah. It didn't have the rewatchability. I haven't even watched it again. Like, I turned it on, and then I just find myself texting through it and going, "Wait a sec, you should be like." I watched Andor again, and Kath is gonna, and I was like gripped, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" And then I'm watching Man. I'm like, "Eh." I'll, I'll just text someone. And then um, next thing I know, I'm ten minutes missing out, and then um, I just keep going and. It's uh, it's not as like you said not a, there's not as much love as there was for the first two seasons like yeah well I, mean, I, I guess TV shows have dips you know most good TV shows have a season in there that someone's like oh you know season whatever was a bit bit shonky but you know it sort of got back on its feet so there's definitely a chance for a resurrection what about you Catherine you gonna are you happy to give Mando a grade or are you gonna you gonna pass a... Meh. yeah that's a it's a solid note from Catherine. Yeah. Right, take that as you will, Faloni, if that is your real name. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, okay, wait one second. Speaking of Faloni, what about the fact that he inserted himself into the show with the hat on? That was a low point. Is that, he's not bald, is he? No, it's just, a, it's just a fashion thing, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, it's okay when you make yourself trap a wolf and sort of. But should have he's... had a hat and a helmet all in one, like it was like a hat helmet that he would wear in the in the X wing. So it's just got like a wide brimmed right. helmet. Don't give him ideas. But yeah. <laughs> seeing Zeb, shot. that was cool. That was a, that was that was one of the high points. And he didn't even turn up in a soaker. So he, we'll get out. He we'll, doesn't. Uh, he doesn't need to. Well, let's, we'll move on to. Well, moving down. I don't even know what's next on the list yet. Let me just move down. Well, yes, it Visions? is a soaker. Ah. Oh yeah. Well, visions. Didn't yeah, let's watch. do visions before we do Ahsoka. I'll just mute my cam- my microphone now. I didn't watch it. Um, you haven't watched it? Oh, well, there won't be news for the normal. You just sound like you haven't got your face in front of it. So <laughs> uh, I thought visions was great. I loved yep. it. I loved it more than the other season. I think the <clears throat> getting away from strict anime made it a lot more accessible to other people. Um, it also meant that you had a lot more sort of, I thought, focused storytelling just because it was a lot more people getting one shot rather than you know, seven or eight shots of the same style. Yeah. I love the Ardman one, but I love Ardman. Oh yeah, that was great. But that one. I, I love think, it. but I thought I thought they were all great. I give I, uh, yeah. Hopefully they they do more. Um, I know it doesn't have the badassery of anime, so to speak, but I thought just in general that the storytelling was better. Yeah, I I really liked it. I, yeah. The- Totally different styles, different stories from uh, the first season, which I a lot of the stories there sort of felt very samey. <clears throat> um, yep. But th- here there were many different stories. Like the first one, um, the name I can't remember, but where the you know kids go out and one oh, so kid, the- it, sorry. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. They they go to the cave or they hear that there's somebody living in the cave or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. the banshee or something. Yep. Yeah. And that one was so different from in what we were expecting and just really different from expectations because we would expect a light side user to be the one finding this child to take them away. It's like, no, no, this is a dark side user and it was quite scary and chilling it was really good but yeah that Ardman one was that um I am your mother your mother uh, yeah that was great and that was one that was shown at celebration and it was yeah we saw it the visions panel we went to the visions panel and got to see that and that when they they had the lady from Ardman come out and I, that was one of my absolute highlights of celebration too I love that and it was just uh, well, when we'll get to celebration but like when you get the slightly more niche stuff it's always really good because the people are really yeah. passionate about it at all, at all those slightly more niche panels and things, but solid a visions get season two gets a solid a for me. Visions get a two thumbs up. <laughs> two thumbs up. Matt rejoin the conversation. 
Visions gets. I'll watch it later. Um, <laughs> you can watch it tonight when we when we log off here. Well, I've got uh, homework. I've got, I've got, I've got homework. Oh yeah, you got all these references. You got to find out what wings I, are. I, I'm <laughs> O from four now. If you include visions, God. <laughs> <laughs> what we did I do counter. last year? Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> so scrolling down. Good call on visions there, Catherine. So, do we want to insert celebration in here? This is roughly the oh, time of year that it o came from to. five. Didn't go to celebrations. Um, oh. We'll touch on it. We'll touch on it briefly. Obviously, Matt, you didn't make it to, to celebration last you year. You were there in spirit. Yeah, yeah, your name came up a lot, but I think you yeah. already knew that. That, <laughs> but um, we had an awesome time. I had an awesome time in London. I think it did some things better than Anaheim. It did other things not as good as Anaheim. Certainly, having the some of the train lines closed over that weekend wasn't particularly helpful. So, like sort of getting out. In and out wasn't as simple as it could have been, but it was still pretty good. Um, yeah. Food was great. Layout was weird. Crowd control on the first day needed work. Some of the placement of the panels was ridiculous. Yeah. Looking at you, collectors stage next to the live stage. <laughs> Whatever they were thinking in there, putting them in a little tent. Um, what else? Well, obviously we didn't get anything in the lottery this year, which was a bit of a stinker, but. Still got to see the Andor panel. Still got to yes. see the Visions panel. I went to the High Republic. Um, went to some of the smaller ones as well. Went to Chase's panel. Uh, went to a couple of other, some of the collecting stuff as well. So, yeah, I I think it was great. It was definitely worth the trip for me. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, I know you can speak to it. I know you, you had a, a very – oh, we saw Diego Luna again in person. Yes. Two from two. In a, in a big, big room, but um, we yes. were pretty close still, and it, closer it was, than yeah. we would have been. Well, we saw him at the live stage as well. Yeah. Um, so I got to lose my little mind again. Um, but yeah, it was it was really good fun. Um, you're right. The the layout I, with those food trucks and the uh, central concourse type of area with with food and things big that was a big improvement but that down the end how they had the two big sort of main spaces like sections opposite across each other. yeah yeah but then also then the main halls through that so it was like yeah. a it was like a four-way traffic they kind of got it on top of it at the end but i don't know what they were thinking there but yeah yeah so they that just, was a bit weird yeah, they really needed to have laid that out a little bit differently because it just meant that crush of people, which people like, you know, tail end of a pandemic or still in a pandemic, come on. like Still takes too long to get in as well. I'm not quite sure oh, why it still yeah. takes so long to get into celebration for whatever reason. But um, biggest loser of celebration again was Hasbro two celebrations in a row get get your exclusives on site don't give me a coupon to order something online that doesn't even ship to australia and ship to another bunch of countries it's just useless yeah. like the, the 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 exclusive itself was somewhat underwhelming anyway it was just a red darth vader the box was cool but i would have bought it i would have yeah. got it and i haven't bothered because then it was just available online to order there was nothing special about it you couldn't even get it. They didn't even deliver. Like, what's, what are you even doing? What's the point? Well, even today, didn't they announce a Thrawn that will be coming out in 2025? Really? <laughs> Welcome back to the conversation. You have piqued point? my interest. One out, of, point? one out of five now. Yeah, well, now he's talking, he's, he's talking his language. Well, on that note, let's... Uh, pivot around to season one of we don't know how many ahsoka dropped the much anticipated series ahsoka which overall i thought was pretty good i thought wasn't perfect but i thought it was better than rando season three yeah but was nowhere near as good as anything like and or even the best mando stuff hey but, um, Hey, stop. <laughs> Episode five, Anakin, the space whales, the music. It was phenomenally awesome. 
You've got that bangy table going on again, too. That, that, no, that's, that's me banging the table. Yeah, I know. I know. I can hear you banging the table. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's intentional. I don't know. I still feel nothing about that. I still think it was cool. I'm glad to see the, the, the career resurrection of a Hayden Christensen. I'm all for that. But oh, don't, don't even I, get me started on Hayden Christensen. I don't even think it. I think it could have tied in closer with the plot. There should have been more lead up about. It was a lot of. There was a lot of like assuming that people knew a lot of stuff about these characters that the casual viewers would not know. Um, we were lucky enough to know that stuff, but there was a lot of things you're expecting people to know to make, get the most out of that show. Yeah. I don't know what you thought, Catherine. I mean, we all know my thoughts about Sabine and Loth Kitty. I'm still not satisfied that. Are you still calling the space RSPCA? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. negligent it's, it feels very in character though that she would just be like forget and let a cat go hungry really it's it's the, it's the star She's wars a petulant 12 year old in a 30 year old woman's body they have they have feeders like digital feeders and come on oh. she took the ball when she explicitly got told not to do it she, she's not she's yeah some of the character choices are a bit weird i I always I'll have to go back and rewatch Rebels, but I always thought Sabine was wasn't so much. I mean, she was rebellious, but not in like a pig headedness way, more in like a you know stick it to the man kind of way, rather than just being like I'm just rebelling because I'm rebelling. But anyway, yeah. Look, I like the little turtle people. Um, the actor they cast as Ezra, he was great. Like the little bit he was on the screen is like yep you're Ezra you've got it you're really great um Thrawn was underused (laughs) I'm just waiting I know he stopped to take a breath here because he's like now I want to talk about Thrawn how how was he underused Catherine because he wasn't dangerous enough yeah it wasn't dangerous enough he's so good in the novels yes and evening rebels, so I wanted more from him. Now I was very happy that they introduced him, what, part way through the season, and we got to see him then because I think even before the show, a lot of us were predicting, oh, they're going to leave him to the last episode, aren't they? They're going to do it. Mm. Um, so I was pleased that we got him through the show but it would have been great to have seen more of him to see why is he such a threat to peace in the galaxy we know we know because we've seen rebels we've read the new canon books we've read the old extended edition book extended universe books we know who thrawn is we know how yeah, why he you should be more worried that he's actually coming back rather than a few people yeah. just kind of going, uh, and like I guess these like the why are the soldiers so like want to do everything for him and things, but yeah, like I think the the finale the execution was a bit clunky. I thought there wasn't sort of enough. What's the word I'm looking for? Gusto. Yeah, gusto. There wasn't enough sort of ticking clock. Not enough sort of. It could have been done a lot more tension. There could have been a lot more. Or, you know, of that kind of thing. But I like that they, you know, I thought Balin was awesome. I thought Shin, yeah. is it Shin? I thought Shin she was really Hachi. Inter- thought they were both really interesting. There were some very good ideas. It feels like, you know, Filoni's been sitting on some good ideas. He's got, obviously got some big ambitions and they've confirmed that the, the second season's in development, which assumes that it's probably going to happen because otherwise they wouldn't say anything, I don't think, if it wasn't going to happen. Um, but... Yeah, I'm curious to see where it ends up. I'm very, I mean, we sort of, I'm surprised that Zeb wasn't in it at all. Maybe there was no place for him, but it just seemed weird that if you put him in a bar in another series that you didn't, he couldn't have been in there somewhere, but maybe there's plans. But yeah. Well, maybe they, they, I mean, look, it was, it was, it doesn't have to be a Rebels reunion, like, but we got enough of it by leaving that one. Oh, yeah, I know, but it just seemed weird that they just, they, brought that gone to the trouble to introduce the character just before and then not used him at all but I mean, would, i'm not like a huge like 
like I'm outraged. My favorite character wasn't in it or anything. Well, you're the one who put him in the concept art for your podcast. Well, I did. Well, just because I was like, well, surely they're going to put him in it. I. Well, uh, that, that, that's the assumption. Oh, that's you just made. the jokes on me. Yeah, I should have put C three PO in there really and uh, learnt my lesson. I would love to have seen Chris Hall's face when that episode dropped and just seen the <laughs> eyes roll into the back of his head uh, and go, on, fuck this shit. <laughs> so, yeah, look, I I give it probably a B minus, Ahsoka. I don't think a C is fair. I think a B minus. A C, is- that is so... No, that's why I don't think a C is fair. I don't think it's it's better than a C, but... It could have been a B or a B plus with a, with some tweaks, with a little bit of. I think things needed to be adjusted a bit more. I think another pass. I think make it easier for the casual viewer. Show why character is important, why they're behaving a certain way, and make more of. I mean, it was cool that Anakin Skywalker turned up, but what was the point? He, there, they. Listen, it's Josh, he had. Major points in this. He was able to finally save the ones he loved from dying, which is a huge theme from Revenge of the Sith. The whole reason he fell into darkness. He was able to save his apprentice from death. That's a plot point, you know, that can't go unheard. All it did was improve her mood. Yeah, but but <laughs> she was a bit of a grump. for five minutes. Well, that's the thing, like. And then she was grumping around afterwards anyway. So there wasn't enough emphasis about why she was not like she used to be and um, what the connection was to Anakin. Now you what, just sound like what, those, Why it was those... cathartic out of it. And then you could have tied his presence, his whole idea of being in there into Balin because he was from the same era. You could have tied all of that in a beautiful bow and had it all relate to each other and be important and have a you know relationship and pass information over and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, we're not we're not through the series yet. Maybe that's still to come. I would have loved to have seen a flashback of Thrawn at the height of the Empire's power, Thrawn running a battle, just, you know, dominating. I would have loved to have seen that because also you would have you could have used then the actor that played the guy with the gold mask. Amos from The Expanse, why do you have that guy and we don't see him? No, you've, no I'm one reference down. On that. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get. But I know, where are you, Matt? Where do you, what's your rating on Ahsoka? You're, um, you're slightly compromised in this, but, you know. Oh, look, I, I'll tell that. you, like, that's the thing. Like, it was, the show had its, you know, it had to do a lot in a very short amount of time in that, it ne- it needed to appease the you know the layman fans who were sort of oh well this is new on Disney Plus I'll give it a crack and you know explain oh kind of for Ezra you know who's Ezra who's been sort of it had a lot to do in a short amount of time I thought it did it really well and it, without also being tediously annoying for the for the know it alls and then. They did. I think they underused Thrawn on purpose because they have big plans for him. They they just wanted to get your beak wet. And um, but like Rebels, it had its low points, but when it had its high moments, they were so good. And you know, I've watched that episode five. I think eleven times. It, I just Oof. I can't get enough of it. It is so good. It's like my go to happy happy episode when i want to <laughs> just feel the tingles cuz and, and every time it's just so good like the mu- i got to say the music in this was better than was on Lud- ludwig season 1 level it was the kindest i've i've listened to the soundtrack so many times i, I listened to this hyperspace jump with the whales and i find that i ha- i had i i i've gone to Eric Strother and i go dude what do you think of this and he's like this is phenomenal. I, I'd love to know if it's a digital orchestra or if it's just the full thing. And the soundtrack is insane. Like, really, it's fantastic. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Mm. Well, I haven't. Uh... Go to Spotify and listen to a few like Thrones Arrival. I don't have a Spotify account. I'm sure it's on Apple Music or. But the... I don't have an Apple. Probably music just on. Account. Someone's probably just put it on YouTube somewhere anyway. It, you it, you can listen to it on YouTube as well. But the the that'll music... burn your CD. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll make you an. A, 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 I don't have a CD player anymore. Do you have a ta- Do you have a tape deck? I'll, I'll see if I can dig one of those or VHS. I'm I'm still in mourning because Apple, you know, with my last phone update, didn't bring over all the stuff I back in the oh, day burnt there. into my iTunes account from the CDs. Oh no! Yes, um, it's, on, it's on YouTube. Trust me, the soundtrack is phenomenally good. Okay. Almost so you, to the point. You, you're going to give it a grade, Matt. Not the soundtrack, but the show. B plus. B plus. Catherine. No, no, sorry. A minus. A minus. A minus. Oh, A minus. A for Anakin minus. A for Anakin minus. Even though Ahsoka starts with A. It's a, this is this is this, this is all about Anakin. <laughs> how, how, how did the show finish with Anakin? It was good. Catherine, anything you want to add to that? Do you want a facial expression or a... It's all right. No, it's all right. She's going to say all right from, uh, from Catherine. All right. Let's, let's work down the list here. What have we got? That's it. Uh, Star Wars Celebration. We've done Star Wars Celebration. Uh, Jedi Survivor. Did anybody play Jedi Survivor? I did. I played it. I beat it. I was pretty six. good. Oh, from six. No, I would give that a solid A, that game. It was very, very good. Tied in with some good High Republic stuff. Uh, had some good twists and turns. If you're into video games, that's your jammy jam. I can recommend that. Are they going to make a third one of that series, do you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's also it's set up for a third by the top, okay. when the story's over. So, yeah, absolutely. I know. Um, that, have they made like, written like novels and stuff from it? Uh, or did I join that? I don't know, that? actually. There's toys and stuff. I don't know whether there's incinerary. Oh, there might have been a novel between the two games, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'd have to ask someone who plays more games who's got time to read novels. So that's King not Tom. out yet. King Tom, yes. 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. Good movie. Saw it at the cinema. 40 years since I was at One Thaggy Cinema watching it in 1983. I thought, uh, well, I mean, the, the template for the – what they do for the anniversary stuff is pretty, you know, stando these days. They sort of re-release the figures. I bought the the retro Return of the Jedi first few, and I got the Luke Jedi Knight Luke one, uh, the reissue, the black series on the prop on the green card. But apart from that, I don't think I really did anything else. Did anybody else do a screen? There was a, did they do the screening in Australia, the Return of the Jedi one anyway? I don't Not that I can remember. I don't think they did. No. I pretty... mean, maybe the Astor did. Oh, but... that the Astor did. There was once there was one cinema in Melbourne that did it, and I yeah. think it was that one. And I was annoyed that there was nothing in Sydney. Uh, yeah, it's the, they have the worst seats. Like, ever. yeah, the seats are terrible. I love being on the balcony, but the seats are ter- the seats are terrible. Yeah, I, when I said to them, going like, "We're doing Lord of the Rings extended marathon," you're like, "There's no way I'm mm. sitting on those seats for nine hours." You're out of your mind. The, um. We yeah. did go and see um, Empire Strikes Back with Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. Oh, yeah, we did do that, didn't we? Yeah, you, me, my sister and my daughter went along and that was her first seeing Empire Strikes Back and she hadn't had it spoiled for her. So that's the way to do it. I think so. If you're one of the lucky ones who see Star Wars in the cinema for the first time, it's uh... – it's well, she's special. she's two for two. She saw a New Hope in the cinema, and she's seen Empire in the cinema. So we we'll just have to hold out for Return of the Jedi now. I saw so, April. I think um, MSO are doing it. Are they? All right. Well, I can wait that. I'm sure she can wait that long. She's not sort of asking too many questions at the moment. No, it was a great experience. I love it with the MSO. Oh, it's just you know. And we sort of chill out for the good seats in Hamer Hall, and it's it's uh, if you're going to do it, you're going to do, do it, do it, do it well. So yeah, that was excellent. I'd forgotten that we'd done that. There's a nice little Star Wars thing that we did. We did a lot. Like, we did a lot last year. We did a lot. I didn't get the poster at Celebration. I think Jimmy Dice got a couple of them. Oh, you need I to be in the panel. He he kind of Jimmy Dice. He Jimmy Dice his way to a couple of posters. I think, as I recall, but. Um, Moving down, High Republic stuff. I'm afraid I didn't read it. I would do any High Republic things. I... Young Jedi Adventures. Anybody watch any Young Jedi Adventures? My no. daughter Sloane, who is five, quite Kai likes Bruster. Young Jedi Adventures. 
I learned who Kai fan. Brightstar and Nubsy and um, Tarbor are. Yeah, my son watches them. He's seen yeah. more Star Wars than I have when it comes to that. And he has, <laughs> I he has the Jedi really Temple on here. Yeah, he's he he won't talk into the mic. He's hopeless. Um, <laughs> Just like his old man, I won't talk into the mic. Where did he get that one from? True, true that. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the show is uh, quite popular in its demographic, which is good. Um, yeah, Sloane really enjoys it. So she that she goes to unprompted to Disney Plus and and watches it sometimes. No, it's very so good, there you go. and it's uh, it hits the feels. I've um I've seen snippets. I, I haven't, you know. There's three seasons too. There's quite a bit, um, but it's not it's not must see Star Wars for people like us. No, I don't think it's crucial canon or anything like that. But I'm um, good. It's good. It's doing well. Did you have something you want to add? Sorry, I cut you off before, Catherine. Did you have something on High Republic you wanted to chime in on? Uh, I um, didn't read any of Phase Two, and yeah, I want to get back onto Phase Three because that picks up the timeline from Phase One. And I have to admit. Just a few hours ago, I was up in a bookstore because I'd seen the first Phase 3 novel um, there a few weeks ago and I didn't buy it and I didn't see it today, so I'll probably have to order it or something. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so we'll see. Well, I, actually, I remember I went to the High Republic panel at Celebration because I couldn't get into the Return of the Jedi one. I'm, I'm sure I've told this story before. So I was wandering past the High Republic panel and stuck my head in. They had a few seats left at the back and went and sat down and caught the last three quarters of it and then got to see the the Acolyte trailer. And Leslie Handland was there and she introduced it. So that was a bit of a, a secret bonus. And then I actually even just wandered out to the because I was looking for um, Laura from Force Toast at the High Republic meetup just outside the thing and couldn't find her, but ran to Christina Ariel and gave her a beanie. So that was my High Republic uh, thing. I had a little chat with her, which is a very lovely lady. She was pretty happy to get the beanie too, which was cool. So that was my High Republic news for the year. Nothing from me. O from Nothing seven. From, o from seven. Oh, my. That one, one, one from eight, actually, I think. And Drops. what have we got else have we got here? We've got Hazlad stuff. That doesn't really count comics i've sort of dabbled on a couple of the comics i've got one for you josh yeah hit me i want you to talk about your most recent purchases in that uh your new it started from a simple purchase that's now taken over as a full-blown addiction by the looks of Uh, the the, yeah I'm i'm going for a kenner run so i bought myself a vintage luke skywalker on endor last 17 figure for myself for my birthday off marketplace so a good price for it and then i thought oh, maybe this is the year i do a little bit of a kenner run and then uh yeah there was a guy in marketplace who was selling a sort of a bulk lot of assorted figures and i was originally going to just get a couple and then he sort of made me an offer for the, all the things he had and it was a pretty good price so i did that and now falling down the rabbit hole of going like all right well maybe i'll keep doing this but the thing is, you know, like I took a month off work and I haven't been paid yet for, since I've been back because I'm a contractor. So I'm like, I've got no money. So I'm just going, well, let's let's put a stop to that until I get paid anyway. Oh, wow. That's exciting. So I'm already looking, trying to figure out how I'm going to display these things. And I know Matt's got a very en- enviable setup at his house. So there is a bit of inspiration there. You know, like the funny story, I my my one of my work colleagues in Melbourne, his sister went through a divorce and it was not very amicable. She took the Star Wars figures in the divorce and he said to me, oh, Maddie, I'm trying to get help my sister get rid of this. She needs some cash. And I got the I got 11 WhatsApp photos. It was an entire set of Kenner vintage from everything, every, including like all last 17. Mm. And I was like, oh, I don't really need them. And I sort of low, I said, I'll give you, two grand for it or 2,500. Um, and like, you know, obviously the yak face is worth, I don't know, 800. Some of the last 17 are probably worth what? Three, four grand alone, let alone mm-hmm. the commons. And this were all with the, with the weapons and everything, but I really wasn't that enthusiastic. So I just sort of, and then in the end my bid, you know, he, she gave it to someone locally in Melbourne for like a hundred dollars more than that. Like, and yeah, there I was. Like, it was. I could I could have finished my set and sold the rest, but I just didn't want to go through the effort of 
but now knowing that you're so keen, I would have I would have cashed in like like um you just flipped them all onto me. What a flip. Yeah, I've got a right I've got a right so far. Like I got I got a couple of last seventeen Ewoks and a dignitary in the set that I got yesterday. If you know anything about figures. So that was so even that in itself almost covered the the, the price of the bulk lot and things. But uh yeah, it is a bit of a it's not a cheap thing. It's uh it can be expensive. I was looking at a website seller in the Netherlands that had a whole bunch of stuff, like a shop there was actually quite affordable. So I'll 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 post an update on that and see how we go. Um, but at the same time, you know, I've got a trip to Japan I've got to pay for and stuff. I can't just be We also need to find a way to break into Turbo's house and steal that vinyl cape Jawa. <laughs> That just sits in his. Well, now you've gone and told him. That's like, well, I already had a pop up R two though. I already had a pop up lightsaber R two. That's one of the most expensive ones that already I don't have to buy, which is very handy. How much is how much was that out of of curiosity? How much was is it to buy? How much was the the pop up R two? Oh, I got it in a show bag as a kid. I've had it all these years. Yeah, so nothing. So (laughs) yeah. I've got the lightsaber's long gone though, so it's only worth half as much without the lightsaber. But still, I'm not too fussed about the weapons and things. Sorry, we've just lost everybody. Catherine's just waiting for us to. It's like, when are we talking about Andor again? Let's get back. On, let's get back on do that. Um, well, so, we yeah, got some news on Andor just just before we. Wrap yeah, we up. did actually. One Catherine, more week I... to finish shooting. So will that be finished yeah. now? Then was that a week ago? Yeah, that was like a week ago that he said that. So he should. So Diego should be finished shooting, and I, and from other reports, I think it was only then a couple of days after him. So it should be finishing up like pretty much now, or at, by the end of the week. And in the interview, I'm pretty sure he said we are one week closer to Andor finishing. <laughs> Actually, no, that that, that was. <laughs> so shout out Catherine for all your hard work and commitment to the cause. Yeah. <laughs> but the yeah, it's exciting. Is when will we get? Well, this is the question, isn't it? This two. is. I mean, looking forward. I mean, we can do a quick little look forward to this year. Obviously, the only when I had Chris Ryan's on uh, last week, which was an episode very well received. Episode actually, people love Chris. He, rightfully so, he's a lovely guy. We had no dates for anything. There was literally not a release date for anything. And then a few days later, we finally got the Bad Batch ones for season three, which are going to roll twenty first of Feb till. Start of May, I think. May so one. We'll, we'll have a, a few months of solid something Star Wars every week. I don't know. The only question is, is it the midnight drop or is it the evening drop? It's going to heavily affect my availability for bad batchering or whatever we're going to, what are we going to call us? Well, I wasn't even planning on doing a bad batch recap. Maybe we could, I haven't done them before. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. We'll we will do something for Phantom Menace 25th anniversary, and I'll definitely get Andy Bell involved in that as well. If you're listening, to Andy, and probably something before that as well. But yeah, so Bad Batch, Acolyte probably this year, Skeleton Crew probably this year. Um, who knows? Is there a Vision season three? You haven't heard nothing. Um, I think there is a Vision season three, but they haven't. They really haven't said any dates. I think. Any dates that we were supposing have gone out the window because the the strikes did affect not only the production or the writing of things, but you know, obviously they want to spread out a bit. You know what they do have. Yeah. Um. So everything got affected in in that way, but um. I- yeah. I, I think Acolyte, three seasons. Skeleton Key, they seem the most likely to come out this year. I feel like three Star Wars shows this year is probably all we're realistically going to get a get, which is kind of yeah. what we got last year, really. We got Mando, Ahsoka, and Bad Batch. I mean, we've got Visions. That's the only thing, an outlier that's pretty much the same as last year, and there was a strike in between. So. Oh, well, it's probably what we're going to get. No celebration this year, taking the year off, gearing up for Japan next year. We sort of sign up, ran off here. I know, Catherine, you did a podcast with our buddy Sean Hoffman all about Japan. Yeah. For all those people who want to, uh, you know, brush up, get excited. Yeah, so we talked about 
some things to know in your planning um, about getting to Japan and what to do in Japan um, because I know... Cats and trains, cats and trains. Oh, yes, that's me. Cats, (laughs) trains and stamps Mm -hmm. is is my focus. Um, But I know that, you know, it would be a long way for people to travel, but I think it's definitely going to be worth it. Um, So we're a year and three months off. So which probably means there'll be some ticket news soon. That's yes. the thing. So everybody yeah. get ready to stay up late. Who's going to that? Now, Matt, what's going on with your podcast, mate? You still in indefinite hiatus? Mate, we are hopeless. You get, you're getting the team back together? Now, um, you've got a, now, now you've got a Zencaster subscription to have, well, to, now, to have to pay for. So you're going to have you know make, make the most of it. Yeah, I don't know. We are. I mean, I, I, I'm guessing so much on all the podcasts. I, I want to get on. I, I, I get my fix here that I just don't have the you energy to fit the door. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I need to talk. Dylan's keen, but I want, I, we we're so adamant on on doing episode fifty as a three as three people. But we never free. I don't know. We just can't. What get number it. are you up to now? You're under forty nine. We're, we're stuck on forty nine, like Warney. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get there, and then you know. Um, I don't know. I've I, I've, ma- I've made my footprint on the podcasting community that, that in forty nine episodes that I we don't need to we, we'll try and <laughs> we'll try and make more. Trust me, I I'm sure our seven listeners are dying to hear from us. That's right, they're beating down the door. Um, well, good work, guys. We got in pretty much on time here. I think we covered things pretty well. Uh, it was definitely worth the wait. I've got a few guests I'm feeling out at the moment, so I'm hoping to get another guest one on soon after this, hopefully. And then I'm not sure what's going to happen after that. We'll just have to see see where we end up. But uh, any anything extra from you guys before we sign off? No, silence is golden. I will uh, we'll, uh, might see you peeps down this weekend. Yeah, well, that's right. We'll, we'll probably hang up the hang up the pod here and we'll start working out logistics. But. Uh, Thank you, Catherine, as always. Thank you for having me on. And if anyone can work out my grading system and present it as a scale, that'd be great. (laughs) There you go. We'll submit it to the Victorian Education Board. And uh, Matt, thank you, as always. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to my wife for looking after my son tonight and putting him to bed so I could uh, be here. I'm sure she's. Indulge. I'm sure she's a big listener. Um, yeah, I'm sure she is. Hello, she makes it to the end of every episode, waiting for her shout out. Um, great, and thank you everybody for listening, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.